Amanda, thank you so much for joining us here at Super Return International. Great to see you again. Likewise, thank you very much. It's just over six months since we last chatted. Tell me about what's changed in that time and what the landscape's looking like now compared to then. Clearly there is quite a bit of concern uh, in the community about the outlook of how things are going to pan out. Uh, and it's clear since you and I last spoke, I've seen that there's been a bit of a pause, the threshold for getting investments through, also when we talk about investments, um, I think it's definitely increased. Um, but it's not like people are closed for business at all. So in terms of co-investments, you said there it's obviously reasonably healthy outlook still. Why is that and what is it that people are looking for in this environment in those co-investments? So I think there are really two, two key aspects of it. One, last year was super busy for everyone. Um, I'm sure everyone has been telling that, which meant that there was a lot of contest. So I think one is the whole resource aspect. People just didn't have the time and some also ran out of allocations. The second point I think is more to the macroeconomic backdrop. If you price an investment before sort of Ukraine, the high pressure on inflation, you want to make absolutely sure that it's still a good deal at the price that was paid. So I, I think that has definitely been something that the investors are very keen to understand. And of course, you look more closely at what are the fundamentals of the business, to what extent will it be impacted. Is there a shift in what LPs are looking for, do you think? So there are certain sectors that have seen quite a significant re-rating, which investors may or may not look at, at, at anymore. Um, I think from our perspective, if we look at the sectors we are in, industrial tech, business services, healthcare and consumer, uh, there's been less of a re-rating and we're probably more of a value investor. I think that's still something that is um, fundamentally working well. You talk there about value and in certain sectors. What are you looking at as the best places to be and what do you need in your teams to be able to capitalise on those areas? Yeah. So we, we've obviously talked a lot about it, where we're going to invest the money going forward. And it, it's not just a sector question, but it's really looking at each individual portfolio company to assess to what extent will it be impacted by the macroeconomic backdrop we have right now. And I guess what we greatly benefit from is we've been around for 20 plus years. We have quite deep bench in terms of uh, professionals who know how to operate a business in turbulent times. Uh, we, we pride ourselves a bit being an old weather investor. So in, in the market we are today, um, yeah, the wind is blowing. We don't know which direction it's going to go. Uh, so we need to have a plan A, B and C. There's a lot of scenario planning that needs to go Absolutely. on. This business is also very good at being quite nimble in those environments, isn't it? More so perhaps than the public market. Oh, absolutely. You can you can operate a lot faster. Um, and what I also think is you're not in the public eye, right, to the same extent. Um, and we've done this before. Last time we spoke, you also told me that you thought ESG had really come to the fore during COVID, particularly the S aspect, with people very aware of who'd been impacted by the pandemic. How have you seen that now go, going forward? And is that a theme that's continued? And do you think that private equity is now looking for not just mitigating risk, but finding impacts where they can invest and be impactful? Absolutely. That is not stuck at all. And I also think the sort of increased oil and gas prices and more focus on renewables being self-sufficient is going to push that even further. Um, we've always seen ESG as a strong value driver. In our team, we recently hired a guy to do head of sustainable investing. We're not an impact fund, but if you look at a number of our investments, getting the ESG right is something we track very closely and it is monitored just like every other um, you know, financial performance. And what it's showing is that actually those moves are good for your bottom line. Absolutely. Not just the bottom line right now, but at the end of the day, if you want to sell a business, which ultimately you're looking to do, you need to ensure that there's a strong ESG foundation, because the next one will look at that as well. And that goes for the E, the S, and the G. If somebody was to have a conversation with you this week or to watch you on stage, what would be the key message you hope that they would take away from having chatted to you? That we are 
cautiously optimistic about the outlook. Uh, we think that uh, it's a shift in the market. There's a lot of transitioning going on, but we also think it creates great opportunities um, if you're a well-prepared investor. Is it good to be back, being able to share those messages and have those conversations with your colleagues? Absolutely. It's, it's great. I mean, this has been a massive event. Um, someone told me we're like 3,000 people, but it, it makes such a difference to meet people in person. It's so nice to see you in person as well, Amanda. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank great you, Emma. You again.